Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create a slit scan freeze frame effect with a line that comes down the screen and warps the image. I'll give you a quick preview of that. So here's what it looks like. Do 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 do. Kind of strange, huh? But I think it's a pretty cool effect. You've probably seen it on Instagram already, but I'm gonna break it down, show you how it's done, and yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so here we are in a new project. I've got the patch editor already open, and the first thing I'm gonna do is right click in here and add a rectangle. That will appear nested inside of this canvas. Fill the width and fill the height, and then I'm gonna rename this to freeze, and I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna rename this other one to line. And now I just wanna create materials for each one. So we've got our freeze mat, and we've got another one here, create new material. We'll call this one line mat. And this one's gonna be for the line that comes down the screen. And this one's obviously just gonna be the camera texture that freezes as that line is coming down. Now we're gonna head up here to the device and I'm gonna create a default pipeline for our render pass. So just hit this create button and it will pull all these patches in here. We have our camera texture, device patch, scene render pass, and then the device screen output here. So first thing we're gonna add in here is a mix patch. So create one of those, drag it up here a little bit. And now from here, we're gonna drag out and I'm gonna add a shader render pass. We already have our scene render pass here, which is part of our default pipeline. Now we have a shader render pass as well. And I'm gonna take our freeze material here and create a patch for it. And that's gonna be what we connect as the final output. You still won't be able to see anything because we have our line up here. But if I get rid of this, then you'll be able to see the camera underneath. We'll add the uh, interactions for the line in a minute. So the next thing we need is to drag out from here again. And we're going to create a delay frame. So create a delay frame. It's this blue patch here. I'm just going to move everything out of the way. This one will get a little bit messy as we go. So I'll try and organize things uh, and keep it tidy. But yeah, now we have this delay frame here. And now what we're going to do is hit this gear icon and click make receiver which will create a new patch here for our delay frame, which acts as a receiver that we can plug into something else. In this case, we're gonna be plugging it into the mix. So connect that up to the second input on our mix patch. And we're also gonna take the RGBA output of our camera texture, and we're gonna plug that into the top input of our mix as well. So now we wanna add the actual animation. So what I'm gonna do is use a screen tap as the trigger. So what I'm gonna do is drag out from the gesture state and add an animation. Now that will automatically be plugged into the play, but if you want, you can also plug that into the reset so that when you screen tap, it will reset the animation and start it from scratch. Obviously you don't have to use a screen tap, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it's just a little bit easier to show you on a screen. So the next thing we're gonna do is drag out from here and create a transition. And by default, it's set to be a vector three, but we're gonna drop this menu down, change that to be a vector two, so it only has the X and Y coordinates. And now what we wanna do is drag out from here and we're gonna add an SDF, and that SDF is gonna be a rectangle. So we'll create one of those. And now from this SDF output, we're gonna create a step patch, which generates a step function by comparing two values. So we have that now, and we're gonna take this input from the top and move it down to the edge input. And now from this step, we wanna drag this all the way back and connect it to the final third input on our mix patch. And this is where things get a little bit messy, kind of takes up some space. So I'm gonna move this over here and I'll zoom out to show you everything afterwards. I'm just gonna reorganize a little bit, try and get things as close as possible. And yeah, so now if I was to hide this line, then you'll see we have a, a quadrant of the screen that's cut out. And that's based on the values that are in this transition here. So we have our half size set at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 on the X. And our center coordinates are set by whatever values are over here in the transition. So in order to get the effect we want, which is the line coming down the screen and warping everything, we're gonna change this value here, the first X to 0 0.5. And we're gonna change the first Y to minus 0 0.5. And you see that's gone now. We don't see that large quadrant in the corner. And now we're gonna change these end values as well. So we'll change this one here to 0.5 and this one also to 0.5. So the only negative 0.5 is this top right one, the start position on the Y coordinate. And we can leave the SDF rectangle as it is. Our half size is fine. And now if I simulate touch and tap on the screen, then you'll see it freezes and it's a little bit warped. The reason that happens so fast is because this animation patch here is what's triggering it and the duration is currently set to be one second. So if we slow that down to say 7.5 seconds, which is half of one Instagram story, then we can reset that. And now the camera is slowly warping. It's coming down the screen. You see this guy's head getting a bit twisted, uh, but there's no line. There's nothing here that indicates how far down the screen it's gone. That's a weird freeze frame. Just gonna, just gonna throw that out there. So now we need to add the interactions for the line. So I'm gonna make this rectangle up here visible again, because we made it invisible before. And now you'll lose track of what's going on behind it, but that's fine, we're gonna fix that in a second. And now from this animation here, we're gonna drag out, create a second transition. 
You can copy and paste these, by the way, but I find there's a little glitch in Spark right now where if you copy and paste, then it will also create duplicates of some other things. So I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to do it all manually. But hopefully they fix that bug soon and we can go back to like more efficiently copying and pasting things. Uh, but yeah, we're going to switch this transition over to a vector 2, drag out, create another SDF rectangle, and then drag out from here, create another step move the input down from the top to the edge input. And now what we're going to do is rather than connect it up to the mix or anything else we've created already, we're going to make a patch out of the line material texture. And we're going to drag that over here and get that connected up. And now you'll see the quadrants come back because all of our values in here have been reset to the default. So if we change those about a bit, then what we'll end up with is a nice thin line that we can animate to come down the screen. So what I'm gonna do is change this start position here on the X to 0.5, and you'll see it cuts everything in half. Obviously, by the way, you can play around with these values. You can change the thickness of the line. You can do anything you want, but I'm just using these as the example because I think it looks pretty good and it's easy to understand like from a visual perspective. But obviously do some experimenting, see what you can come up with yourself. So the next value is the Y axis on the start position. We're gonna change that to minus 0.01. And now the end position for our X, 0.5, and we'll leave the end position for our Y as it is. And this time we need to change some values in our STF rectangle, because right now it's pretty thick. It's a pretty thick line just covering half the screen. So we're gonna take this Y value here, which is the up and down coordinate, and we're gonna change that to about 0 0.005. And now the line's pretty much gone. So what I'm gonna do is change the color here so it's a little bit more easily recognizable. And now if I tap on the screen, you'll see the line comes down and as it passes over anything that's moving in our scene, you end up with a pretty weird result. Uh, that's quite a big forehead there. <laughs> yeah, so there's not much more to this actually. It's pretty simple. If you wanna change the direction of the line, so maybe you want it to go from left to right instead, I'll show you how you can change these coordinates now and we'll make the whole thing go from left to right. So first up is just alternating these two values. So the Y axis right now is the up down. So we're just gonna change this 0.5 to a 0.05 on the X instead and bring this back to 0.5. And now you'll see the line is horizontal, it's coming down the screen. And we're also gonna change the values in our transition here that's connected to the line material. So this first X value here is gonna change from 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.01. And the end position is gonna to change to 1.01. And now the start and end positions for our Y coordinates just gonna to change to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So now if we tap on the screen, you'll see the line is going across the screen, which is pretty sweet, but our freeze frame effect is still coming down. So we're gonna change these values in here as well. That's again, just such a weird, I like this guy. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got some weird expressions going on. So for these values, all we need to do is alternate the start positions X and Y. So we're gonna take the minus five from here and move it over to here. So the X value becomes minus 0.5 and this Y value becomes positive 0.5 and that's it. And so now if I tap on the screen, you'll see the lines going from left to right and so is the freeze frame underneath and it's creating a pretty trippy effect. Uh, kind of crazy, it's going horizontal now instead of vertical. And if you want, you can add a tap to change feature and you can alternate between the two. So you can add both of these together if you wanted, or you could like adjust the variables, maybe make the thickness of the line a little bit different or the just change some of the values is basically what I'm saying. Play around with it, see what kinds of effects you can come up with. So now I'll switch over to the FaceTime camera. You can see what it looks like on me. And if I tap on the screen, the line goes from left to right, kind of warps me horizontally as it goes. And there you go, that's the result. And if I undo all these values that I changed, we can go back to what we were. Just hit Control Z for that. Then what we end up with is the line going vertically down the screen again. It's warping things as it goes. And that's pretty much it. If you need to pause this, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see the numbers that I'm using here and then I'll redo it all. And those are the values that will make it go from left to right. So I'll hit refresh and now we're going left to right again. Pretty sweet, huh? I think this is an awesome effect. I'm gonna keep playing around with it, see what else I can come up with. Let me just zoom out, show you everything we got here. So we have our two rectangles, one for the freeze frame itself, one for the line. We have our default pipeline here, which is the scene render pass with our camera texture and our device connected up, and then the actual screen output itself. All that's plugged into this mix, which goes into our shader render pass, delay frame with a receiver connected to it that's also plugged into our mix patch here. That's what's creating the actual distortion effect. And then our freeze material is what's connected to that. So we can actually see it on screen. Then we have our loop animation that runs through everything. One is for the distortion part. 
and the other one here is for the material texture for the line so it actually goes up and down you can see it you can change the color of this you can add an animation if you want underneath all kinds of stuff but yeah that's going to do it for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you found this useful don't forget to like share comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll catch you in the next one peace Ha 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 ha.